Hello everyone, welcome to another video on the channel and welcome to the first of a brand new series of videos on the channel. It's an idea I've had in the back of my mind for a couple of months now. It's a fairly simple premise. We're going to take GT Sport, a particular car and track combination and compare that car and track combination against another racing game or sim. We'll just see what they're doing similar. We're just going to compare the handling experience, the driving experience if you like. So what are they doing similar, what are they doing differently. Are the car characteristics the same or have we got different car characteristics? Are we feeling the bumps in the same places, feeling the curves in the same places? Are we feeling the weight of the car in the same places? And so yeah, just a quick snapshot of how the two games stack up against each other when it comes to that driving experience. So we will need to be careful though and keep as many variables similar as we can in terms of, well, of course, the car and track combination goes without saying, but making sure we've got fuel and tyre wear similar, tyre compound, weather conditions, uh, so we've got the look, it looks the same as well, damage will be on, using the same view, so obviously cockpit view for both of them, and then of course using the same equipment, in this case it will be the PS4 CSL Elite with the McLaren GT3 rim, and the settings within the wheelbase will be identical as well, so yeah, hopefully some of you might find interesting, got a number of games to compare GT Sport to, we'll be starting off with iRacing, as you've probably guessed from the thumbnail and the footage in the background here, uh, we'll be going up against ACC, we'll probably do two on ACC, we'll do a dry and a wet, get race rooms experience, automobilista and we'll maybe culminate the series just after the release of Gran Turismo 7, take the same combination between GT Sport and GT7 and uh, see how they compare to each other and see if there's much difference in terms of the physics and the handling model. So yeah, that's the plan going forward for the series. As I said, you've probably already guessed that round number one here is going to be GT Sport versus iRacing, going by the thumbnail. It's going to be in the BMW M4 and Group 4 for GT Sport and GT4 for iRacing. And we're going to do two laps around Interlagos. So yeah, that's how we'll do the comparison. It'll just be very, very quick. Two laps in GT Sport, two laps in iRacing, then a quick conclusion at the end, just discussing what we found. So with all that said and all that done, let's get into the car, let's get into the BMW M4 on GT Sport. So here we are then in the BMW M4 on GT Sport around Interlagos. Two laps will go around here. We are in an actual race with the AI, so let's get through the first corner here and dispose of them. Oh, you first moment there from GT Sport. That all too familiar uh, rear end snapping out under braking, but you do feel it straight away. It doesn't really come as a surprise, you know, you get enough information there to correct it. Uh, one thing I should point out though is we are also using ABS on week here on GT Sport. I personally feel it feels like a much more authentic experience under braking, kind of removes that crutch that uh, I feel that G, sorry, default ABS is. Uh, obviously, weak is a little bit slower as well. I think in terms of the comparison, it's more accurate to what you're going to feel in some of the other games we're going to look at here. So the first thing I always kind of welcome in GT Sport when I move back into it from playing another racing game is that kind of reassuring weight of the car. Uh, it's one of the sort of most important things for me in any racing game is to be able to feel the weight of the car. Oy. Let's see if uh, my BMW does that in iRacing, eh? locking up the rear brakes there as we come into the hairpin. So yeah, I, I do enjoy being able to feel the weight of the car. At the end of the day, we are chucking around a ton and a half of metal here, so we should be able to feel that through the wheel and through the physics if you like. And I think GT Sport does quite a good job of that as well. So coming up through the two fast left-handers here, lots of uh, bumps felt in the force feedback, which is nice to feel. Uh, but, if I was going to throw a criticism at it, I would say at this kind of point, as we're on a kind of completely straight piece of road there, there's a little bit of a dead feeling in the track. It's definitely something I'm hoping GT7 improves on over GT Sport. Just getting a little bit of, sorry, try to talk here and uh, do commentary, I'm not that good at doing both at the same time. But yeah, I'm hoping GT7 over GT Sport just gives you a little bit more road feel when you're on like a street piece of track like that. Can feel a little bit dead, it'll be interesting to see how that compares to iRacing. Over the kerbs though, nice little rumble from the force feedback on the both kerbs there. 
and then it's going to this fast right hander. This is what I do like about GT Sport. It gives you, the car loads up nicely, you can feel the weight of the car, and it just allows you to be quite precise with your steering. So, no, well, I think it was the next corner we had the problems with. It's hopefully the, the brakes have heated up sufficiently in this second lap to not try and kill us. Take our time anyway. Coming in to, I think this is called Miguel, oh, this corner maybe. Slight lift required on the hard tyres here. So there we go, we have survived without dying. As I said, a nice bit of rumble from the curb there in GT Sport. That's made the curbs do feel nice in GT Sport. But yeah, I think the overall kind of factor what I can always take away from GT Sport, or certainly in the M4 here, as there's the car feels nice and stable, nice good weighty feeling to it, just allows me to be quite precise with the, the steer and attack the corners. Uh, other thing we did note though is that the back end is quite leery under braking and uh, it'll be interesting to see how our BMW M4 handles in iRacing in that respect and we were feeling the bumps, but we've got our knowledge now, we've got our kind of our notes taken down on GT Sport. Let's move on to iRacing and uh, see how things are feeling over there. So here we are then in iRacing following the pace car around here before we start our two lap run slightly different starting procedure here so uh, just one other thing to note as well I am using a different recording software here to record iRacing because we use the Elga the Gato HD capture for GT Sport and we're using Radian's proprietary software for their GPUs to record this whatever it's called I can't remember Radian Pro maybe but yeah, here we are then in the BMW M4 at Interlagos on iRacing. Waiting on the safety car going in so we can get underway get here. Going green. Got our notes on GT Sport. Let's see what we feel the same here or what we feel different. So underway we get green, once green, again. Green. We are on a race here with some AI cars, so let's get through the first corner. Without dying. So the first thing that immediately springs to mind, having just jumped onto iRacing here straight from GT Sport in the same car and track combo, is that this car feels so much more loose. Compared to GT Sport, the car feels much more stable on a GT compared to this uh, M4 here, like the suspension appears to be much softer, whereas I guess GT Sport much has much stiffer suspension. One thing though that is definitely carried over from both games and it definitely feels very similar between the cards is that tendency to break under, uh, break, break the rear under braking. What am I trying to say there? Yeah, lose the rear under braking. That is definitely something that both games do. So, I don't play a massive amount of eye racing here, so do forgive the driving a little bit. Back ends all over the place in this thing. Okay then, got up to the two fast left handers here. We felt the bumps nicely in GT Sport. Are we getting the same from eye racing? We get a little bit of the bumps through the first left hander there. Second left hander here, again we feel the bumps not as pronounced to GT Sport I might add and similar to GT Sport once we're on the straights and just go in a straight go. line. Not a massive amount of road feel, again that back end trying to step out there. It's definitely a much more lively car than I racing. It's come through the curve of the sole here I believe it's called, you can just feel the car. You don't have the same weight in the car, but there's definitely the car feels like it's doing a little bit more. I guess the suspension's probably... I think iRacing's giving you more suspension feel than GT Sport, that's for sure. Interestingly, coming down through that wee left-hand kink there, GT Sport it seems to be quite bumpy, the track there. Absolutely nothing from iRacing though, or very little in comparison. All 
after all, you know, having just come straight off GT Sport onto iRacing here without any kind of warming up, you know, I'm just using the same braking points, the same kind of turn in points, the same gears. It's not presenting me with too many issues. That curb on the outside there of the last corner definitely doesn't feel quite as uh, bumpy as the the same curb in GT Sport, but yeah, there's definitely similarities, there's definitely differences as well. We'll definitely discuss them in the conclusion. But here we come to cross the line to finish our second lap in iRacing. Now, unfortunately, we can only uh, set up a Three lap races, the minimum amount of laps I'll actually set up in I racing. So I'm going to carry on here, see if I can do a slightly better lap, and we'll be back for the conclusion. So there we have it, then, folks. That was GT Sport versus I racing in the BMW M4 around Interlagos. Just a couple of laps, a quick comparison. The biggest takeaway, the biggest difference I noticed between both of them was the GT Sport. The car felt very, very stable in the corners, almost like the suspension was incredibly solid. Uh, whereas in iRacing the car felt a lot looser, you could definitely feel the suspension working and you could almost visualise the suspension as well within the car. Uh, it just appeared to be a lot looser in that sense. There was definitely similarities though between the cars, the way it kind of broke traction under braking on the rear into the corners seemed very similar in both games. Uh, in terms of how you could just approach driving them as well, in terms of gear selection, turn in points, uh, stuff like that all seemed uh, breaking points obviously uh, a big one as well seemed to carry over on both games we actually did a 141.4 on that last lap on iRacing up against a 141.2 on GT Sport so yeah the cars kind of sim, uh, circulate the track quite similar lap times it would seem uh, but yeah that was the bit, the, definitely the biggest difference was the stability. GT Sport, the car felt very stable. I racing, the car felt very loose. They both kind of lost the rear under braking. In terms of how you felt the track underneath the cars, uh, there was a couple of points where I definitely felt the bumps more in GT Sport. Uh, the two fast left handers on the back straight, well, the main straight, I guess, towards the end of the lap in particular. You definitely felt them in I racing as well, uh, but the kind of left hand kink. I guess it'd be turn 5, uh, iRacing didn't have anything there, or very very little, whereas GT Sport felt quite pronounced with the bumps, so that was definitely just a little difference that I noticed, the kerbs felt nice on both of them, maybe a little, little bit more rumble from GT Sport, uh, but yeah, all in all, things were quite similar, the criticism of both games I guess would be on the straights, when you're kind of just driving a straight line, there's pretty much no feel whatsoever. Particularly, GT Sport's slightly worse than iRacing in that respect, because you do get a little bit of suspension feel uh, most of the time in iRacing. iRacing felt better through the Senna S, just to the fact that the car felt like it was doing a little bit more. I'll say that much for it. But yeah, that's pretty much my conclusions. Hopefully that's been interesting for you. A little interesting experiment, uh, experiment for myself. I'm looking forward to making some more of these. Let me know what you think in the comments about this video. Maybe it's not for you. Maybe it's a terrible idea. Maybe you like it. It'd be interesting to get a little bit of feedback on it because, uh, yeah, it's just something I want to maybe continue. They're not the hardest videos in the world to make either. Uh, I can probably put these together in around about an hour, an hour and a half. So, yeah, let me know what you think. And uh, thank you very much for watching. If you've made it to this point, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Catch you on the next one. Goodbye now.